Welcome back to Dark Blood's Garage. After spending a few days at my local machine shop, we decided to use a donor block out of a pickup truck from the 1990s. The block needed all the threads cleaned and retapped. We also needed to surface the deck because it was way out of whack. The bores were unfortunately really ovaled out, so we had to go with 30 thou over. So we bored and honed these out and got a brand new set of pistons. I installed a brand new set of camshaft bearings, freeze plugs, and oil gallery plugs. So, first thing is first, I usually put the camshaft in prior to anything else. And the reason being is because with the block turned upside down, you can get a clear visual of all the camshaft bearings. And with that clear view, you're going to be able to guide this camshaft in a lot easier. And if you need some extra assistance inside the block, you can actually just pick it up with your hand and help guide it. This will prevent any damage to those brand new bearings that you just installed. So make sure your workbench is absolutely clean. Make sure you've inspected the entire camshaft, clean it 100%, use brake cleaner, air gun, and all that stuff. And make sure you have a brand new set of clean gloves. And uh, all we're gonna use is whatever assembly lube that you can find locally. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this in as carefully as we can. And this is a process that could take some time, but you got to be really careful when you do this. So once you get to this stage, you can't really guide this in using the same methodology. You're going to have to add the timing sprocket and use both your hands to guide this one last bearing in. is the crankshaft so once again make sure it's 100% spotless clean and that also goes for the block where the bearings sit make sure that that surface is 100% spotless and clean any imperfections that you have in that will offset your bearing tolerances and that's going to cause some oil pressure issues with your crankshaft the other thing to note is which bearings go where the bearings with the hole and the little valley go into the block whereas the smooth surface bearings go into the main caps. So the process is going to be pretty straightforward for this installation. All we're going to do is put the bearings in with some pre-assembly loop. We're going to drop the crank in, the main caps, and then we're going to torque everything down to spec. So we're just going to make sure that these are all in the correct order before we put them into the block. And we're going to go ahead and apply our assembly lube. And for the bolts, what we're going to use is ARP assembly lubricant. This is to ensure that you get the correct torque specs on all your bolts. You're also going to use this stuff on the head bolts. So you'll apply it to the threads as well as the bottom of the head.
So before you go ahead and torque these down with the torque wrench, make sure you know what the actual torque specs are for your bolts. Some of these bolts are torqued to yield. Some of them are 70 foot pounds, which are these ones in particular. If you have ARP bolts or studs, they might be a higher rating, like 75 to 85 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down. They're gonna be done in three increments. I'm gonna start my first increment at 30 pounds, the next one at 60, and then the final torque is gonna be 70 foot pounds. So the other thing about torquing these main caps down to sequence is you gotta torque these down just like a gasket. So you're gonna start with these two bolts, step out to the next set of caps, and then step out to the final caps on the outside. The back bearing is actually the thrust bearing for the entire crankshaft. So before we torque the last cap down 100%, we actually got to give it a smack in this direction and a smack in the other direction to help seat the bearings correctly. So now that you've got the crank put in, we're just gonna go ahead and rotate this a little bit to make sure that it moves smoothly. And while we're here, we're also gonna line up one of these journals with the center line of one of these bores. This will be the very first piston that we're gonna slide in. And the reason being is we wanna rotate this assembly as least as possible. Every time you rotate this, you're basically wiping out pre-assembly lubricant that you've put onto your bearings. So you wanna reduce that as much as possible. In the next video, we're going to continue our assembly, starting off with the pistons, piston rings, and rods.